Welcome to the Driving for Dollars podcast, the place to be for house flipping tips, tricks, and advice that's run unfiltered, but works. Learn to generate more leads and deals through our marketing expertise. Now, let's get into the show. What's up, everybody? This is episode four of the Driving for Dollars podcast. Hey, I want to thank you guys who have been listening to the first three episodes. And if you have not already, make sure you subscribe. Just hit that little subscribe button in iTunes. It really helps our rankings and it will help get this podcast out to as many people as we possibly can as we try and help everybody that's using Driving for Dollars to increase their lead flow, increase their deal flow, and ultimately make mo money. Now, this week's show, number four, got a couple things I want to talk about. First is just an overall driving for dollars tip. As I mentioned, that's going to be kind of the the theme of the show. And then it'll be followed up with an app tip. So when using our driving for dollars app, just some tips on how to be a better marketer, how to better use the app. And that way you can utilize it to its most capabilities, which ultimately will make it more valuable to you. So first thing I want to talk about is something that I've had a lot of people ask about in regards to our app. And it's kind of a bigger, it's kind of a bigger deal than just what's being asked. And what's asked is basically, can we create an enhancement to the app that basically highlights the streets that you've driven? And the answer to that is yes. And the answer to that is yes, we will be doing that. Well, that will be in a future enhancement. But that's not going to solve the overarching challenge that people have, which is basically knowing where it is that they're driving, right? And so Here's what we do in my business and what I would suggest you guys do because ultimately when you do driving for dollars, the whole idea behind it is that you do it in a way that's very organized and so you can segment your market very specifically so that then when you run your marketing to the lists that you've created, you're marketing to very specific areas and you can remain super organized moving forward knowing exactly who you've mailed or marketed to, exactly how many times, where they're at in your rotation and all those things. So what we do ahead of time before we actually drive. And this is when we're actually looking to create lists and we're not just doing like one-off properties here and there that we see, which that happens a lot too. Like I'm driving around right now, you know, I may see a property here that just randomly looks like crap and it's like a great driving for dollars lead. I might plug that in just so I can get the owner's information and their phone number and we could potentially shake them down here later at the office. But if I'm going to go out and drive for dollars and actually spend some time doing it on any given day, I map out the areas that we're going to drive first. So we basically create like a, a, a subsection of our city or a blocked out, you know, let's call it a 10 by 10 block area or a five by five block area, depending on, you know, how big of an area you want to drive. And we print off the map and we basically map it out, we block it out, and then I take that map with us in the car. Or if we know the area really well, which sometimes is the case, sometimes we just know the areas, you know, super well and we know where we're going, you know, we know the major cross streets and what we're trying to stay in between, then we don't need to take the map with us. But we at least plan it out via a map ahead of time. And so we we'll just, we'll print out the map and we'll kind of game plan before myself or I send Dan out or whoever to do our driving for dollars for us. We kind of game plan that ahead of time. That way we know exactly where we're driving. And so it's helpful in terms of creating the best list you can as efficiently as possible. But it's also very helpful as you move forward with your marketing because you know exactly which list you're creating on any given day for whatever pocket it is that you're going to eventually continue to market to. So make sure you map out your areas ahead of time. It will really help you not only be more efficient in creating the lists, but it will make you much more organized on the back end when you're basically doing your marketing to them on a continual basis because you want to make sure that you market to all of your driving for dollars lists on a continual basis. You don't want to just pull the list and send them one mailer and call it good and because chances are you're not going to get great you're not going to get great results in today's market which is a super competitive market for most places. So that's the actual driving for dollars tip. Now the tip in terms of using the app and the data that the app provides one thing that now as I've mentioned in the show and you guys if you're on our mailing list you've heard the app will give you 
the phone number of the owner as well. And so basically it gives you the phone number that's the highest probability phone number to connect with them. And so what we do is we use that phone number to market to them. And we'll either cold call them or we'll slide dial them, which is basically a ringless voicemail type situation. We'll hit them up after we mail them. And so the idea is, is that it's a follow-up. It's the secondary touch point to market to them. And so we do it after we mail them because we send them a memorable mail piece first. And by doing that, now, if it's a good enough mail piece, they'll remember it. Now, if it's just your standard yellow postcard or whatever that people send, they may or may not remember you. So we generally try and make our pieces a little more standout-ish and so that it's a little more memorable when they get it in their mailbox. And that way, when we follow up with a cold call or a ringless voicemail or something like that a few days later, we at least, or they at least remember us or the chances of them remembering us are much greater. So that's how we do it. But I would suggest following up with that ringless voicemail or a cold call or whatever it is you want to do using the phone number, probably, I don't know, three, four days after you mail them. That way you ensure that they got the mail piece, but it's not too far removed so that they hopefully remember you as best as they can. And it's not something you mailed them like two weeks prior, but you're also not cold calling them or slide dialing them the day after you mail because they may not have gotten your mail piece yet. So that's the best way that we've found to utilize the phone number for marketing marketing in terms of timing and how to layer that marketing on top of your direct mail, which should be the foundation of all your marketing. And so that applies the same whether you know, you're a real estate investor looking to potentially try and buy their property or even if you're a real estate agent trying to follow up with somebody in order to try and get an appointment to potentially list their house, which you know, that happens all the time as well. But the idea there you know, in terms of the marketing is the same on both. You want to warm them up a little bit with a mail piece first, and then you want to follow up with some type of a call or ringless voicemail to kind of help spur interaction between you and them to uh, hopefully start a conversation and then hopefully put together a, a transaction or a deal. So hopefully you guys enjoyed those tips on today's Driving for Dollars podcast. I'll be back probably later this week with another tip, both in terms of using Driving for Dollars and also in terms of the app. But if you enjoyed this and you enjoyed our other episodes, make sure you go subscribe and that way you can hear all of these episodes as soon as they drop. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next one. Thank <laughs> you.